morning. I welcome you to our worship this morning as we gather together here on this Palm Sunday. And in our worship, we blend our voices with those who gathered in Jerusalem, welcoming Jesus into the city with shouts of Hosanna. And so we join with that wonderful, that wonderful greeting as we welcome Jesus into our worship today, into our hearts and into our lives. Just a, a couple of quick announcements. First of all, just one birthday in the coming week, and that is uh, Nick Cornelis is celebrating his birthday. So happy birthday, Nick, in the coming week, and may your day be very special when it arrives. Also a reminder of our Holy Week and Easter services. Throughout the, the Holy Week, we are having daily services at 10.30 in the morning. These are on our YouTube channel and will be available at 10.30 or other times through the day, depending on your schedule. And uh, we are journeying uh, along with Jesus through Holy Week, but using the story of the Stations of the Cross as, as our scripture and as we reflect through that, that very special and meaningful week in our, in our Christian year. Again, on Easter, our service will be on our YouTube channel at 10.30 in the morning. We welcome you to join us as we gather together again to celebrate the risen Lord Jesus in our lives. Our service for today is the service for Palm Sunday, and we begin with our opening greeting found on page 2. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our Savior, to suffer, to die, and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith and love, so that united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Behold, your king comes to you, O Zion, meek and lowly, sitting upon an ass. Ride on in the cause of truth and for the sake of justice. Your throne is the throne of God. It endures forever. And the scepter of your kingdom is righteousness. You have loved righteousness and hated evil. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us come together to a moment of confession. Imagine Jesus entering our presence just as he entered Jerusalem some 2,000 years ago. Envision the palm branches, the donkey, the shouts of Hosanna, understanding who he is and knowing who we are. We pray together. O oh God, you know us well. We are quick to speak of faith, but slow to live it fully. We shout Hosanna as Jesus approaches as did the people of Jerusalem many years ago. But we do not want him to come too close, not close enough to really see. And we pray together, O oh God, you know us well. We are quick to claim faith in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. But like the throng who greeted his entry into Jerusalem, we are fickle, slow to live fully and everywhere as faithful disciples. We know where we fail. O oh God, you know us well. 
We are quick to want the blessings of faithfulness, but like the twelve who spent the last week with him, we are slow to accept the pain and suffering of authentic Christ-like living. Forgive our weakness and fear. The Lord is God. The Lord brings light to those in darkness, forgiveness to those who truly confess, and pardon to all who seek to follow Jesus. Rejoice that the steadfast love of the Lord endures forever and ever. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive the love that never dies and never fails. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Hebrews acclaim Jesus as Messiah and King with palm branches in their hands, crying, Hosanna in the highest. May we also go forth to meet Christ and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our service now continues with the proclamation of the word and our first reading. A reading from the prophet Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. <clears throat> I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to your fortress you prisoners of hope. Even now, I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. From Philippians. In your relationships with one another, 
have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature with God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus. Every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage, and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people were standing there, and they asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and, and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Earlier this week, Father Michael and I were talking about Palm Sunday, and I raised a question about Jesus and his disciples. I had just read today's gospel, and I jokingly asked if he ever thought that the disciples questioned the things that Jesus asked them to do. For example, in today's gospel reading, we read about how Jesus told his disciples to go into town, and they'd find a colt tied up there, and they were to bring it to Jesus. He told them that if anybody questioned what they were doing, that they were to say that Jesus needed the colt, and it would be returned immediately. So the disciples went off to town and they found the colt and they found it exactly the way that Jesus had said including the people who questioned what they were doing so my question to Father Michael was do you think that the disciples ever looked at each other and said does does Jesus ever get it wrong he always he always knows what's what he's doing everything he tells us it, it, it happens. He never leads us astray. How is Jesus always right? Throughout the Gospels, we see Jesus asking his disciples to do things that didn't always make sense to them, and yet they went ahead and did what Jesus asked. Why? Why would the, any of the disciples walk away from their lives and follow Jesus? Why would Peter get out of a boat in the middle of the lake and walk towards Jesus? 
Why would the disciples start feeding the multitude of people with only five loaves and two fish? The answer is simple. Trust. The disciples did all of these things and many more because they trusted Jesus. As we enter Holy Week, as we read about Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, I think we are witnessing the greatest act of trust in history. There was so much unknown to the days ahead. There was to be pain and betrayal and sorrow. And yet Jesus kept going because he trusted the Father. When I was a little kid, about nine years old, my brother had a bike that I wanted to ride, but I didn't know how. Now my best friend, Shirley, she had this wonderful bicycle and she knew how to ride. And she said to me, AJ, I'll teach you how to ride this bike. And I can remember that spring day, her holding on to the seat and the handlebar as I sat and I pedaled and tried to balance. And she kept her hands on the bike and ran along beside me. I trusted Shirley to keep me from falling and that trust was very well placed. Trust is an integral part to any relationship. It can mean the difference between being with someone or walking away. Trust can mean the difference between asking someone for help or continuing to struggle alone. Trust can mean the difference between stepping out in faith or staying put and playing it safe. The disciples trusted Jesus and he never let them fall. Time after time after time, the disciples put their trust in Jesus. They stepped out in faith and did what Jesus asked. They didn't often understand his request, but they placed their trust in Jesus. They trusted that Jesus knew what he was doing. What about us? Do we trust? Is God asking us to do something? What is he asking us to do? When we're asked to do something that we don't understand, what is our response? Are there things in our lives that, that God is asking us to do that we haven't done yet? Why not? Is it because these, these things seem so big, so complicated, and so difficult that we can't imagine doing them successfully? Is God asking us to do something that is so far out of our comfort zone that we don't know how to start? I, I get that. I understand that. It's taken me 14 years to be standing here. And shortly I'll be going off to returning to the military to be a military chaplain. And even though I've had great education and the best of on the job training here in my curacy with all of you and with Father Michael and Father George, I'm still afraid. There are, it, it's a huge step of faith to step away from the unknown, to step away from the known to the unknown. Sometimes the things God asks us to do will change our lives, and that can be really scary. And sometimes it feels like we couldn't possibly be the person that God really wants to do that job. God, you must have made a mistake. I can't do that. But you know what? God didn't make a mistake. 
God looks at you and I, and he sees our potential. God knows what we are capable of, and that's why he gave us the gifts and abilities and talents that he has given us. We just have to trust God and his plan for our lives. It's no easy task to trust like that, but it can be done. Others have done it. We have story upon story of people who placed their trust in God and did extraordinary things. Think about all those who have gone before us, the saints, but also the ordinary people who stepped out, of, stepped out in faith because they trusted God. If they did it, so can we. And it's what Jesus did all those years ago, coming into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. As he entered Jerusalem on the colt, as the people laid down their cloaks and palm branches and shouted, Hosanna, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus was trusting God. Jesus trusted that the Father knew what he was doing and that the Father had a plan and that his Father would not let him fall. As we enter Holy Week, let's think about the trust that Jesus put in the Father to take care of him throughout the days ahead. Jesus stepped out in faith because he had trust in God and in the Father's plan for his life. Well, my friends, God has a marvelous plan for each and every one of us. God is asking us to step out in faith and trust that God's love is enough. Enough to see us through anything God asks of us. God will never let us down. All we need to do is trust. Amen. The sun is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. On this final week of our Lenten prayer bowl uh, meditation, we place in a piece of purple cloth reminded of Jesus who, as he is shouted Hosanna on this special day, is our King as well. Sovereign God, you have established your rule over the human heart, not by force, but by the servant example of Jesus Christ. Move us by your Spirit to join the joyful procession of those who confess Christ Jesus with their tongues and praise him with their lives. Amen. Amen. Our service now continues with our next hymn, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty.
Today we pray for the Anglican Church and the communion cycle of prayer in Hong Kong. In the Anglican Lutheran cycle of prayer, we pray in the Anglican Church for the theological colleges and training programs within the ecclesiastical province of Canada. The Anglican School of Theology, Montreal Diocesan Theology College, and Queen's College. In the Lutheran Church, we pray for the Dean, Council, and congregations of the Northwestern Ontario area of the Manitoba Northwestern Ontario Synod. In our own diocese, we pray for Bishop Michael and Sophie. In our diocesan cycle, we pray for St. Mary Magdalene Napanee and their priest, the Reverend Richard Hetke. In our community, we pray for our parishes and for our shared ministry. We pray for our friends at St. Paul's, Canon Lynn Dillaba and the Reverend Ted Guthrie, and Good Shepherd Lutheran and the, Reverend, and the Rector Moses Prashad. In our parish, today our parish cycle, we pray for Leon and Joyce Edgley, John Erb and Shireen Pamlakoti, and John Flanagan. We pray for our clergy Michael, AJ, George, and our staff and wardens. We pray for peace in all countries of the world. We pray for those responsible for distributing and giving the vaccines of COVID-19 that our world might begin to recover from the pandemic. We pray for our troops serving in many parts of the world and members of our regiment, the Brockville Rifles, particularly for those who are presently deployed. We pray for all the people living in areas of conflict and for all refugees fleeing for safer countries. We pray for our planet that we might be all faithful stewards to the earth and continue to pray for our warming center that it might search and find a safe place to continue its good work. Now for our prayers of intercession. Our Savior comes to us humbly, riding a donkey and proclaiming a message of peace. Let us pray for the church for earth and for all its creatures, and for all people in need, saying, God of mercy, hear our prayer. That Christians hear and share the word of God as two disciples, God of mercy, hear our prayer. That all ends of the earth receive the words of the King of Peace, God of mercy, hear our prayer. That all leaders of church and of state prefer humbly service to empty power, God of mercy, hear our prayer. That all those people living live with the gratitude for the gifts of nourishment, friendship, family, trust, patience, and hope, with the courage and wisdom to change whatever fails to be life-giving. God of mercy, hear our prayer. That those who see the cross starkly revealed in their lives draw strength from the name that is above every other name. God of mercy, hear our prayer. That we might live with gratitude for our ancestors whose faith and witness have nourished our own. That all who mourn today will be comforted and that we who hope to greet Jesus when he comes again will be ready and filled with joy. God of mercy, hear our prayer. God of creator, you show your sons and daughters the way of freedom, way to freedom through the gentle obedience of your son, Jesus Christ whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. We come to the prayer over the gifts on page six. As an opportunity to first and foremost give God thanks for all the many blessings of our lives. We also as a church give God thanks for the many gifts of our members who support the ministry of our church, but also uh, support the ministry by using the gifts of music, of reading, of intercession, sharing in these uh, online services that we have been doing together and in so many other different ways. This prayer is about gifts and giving thanks. Gracious God, the suffering and death of Jesus, your only Son, makes us pleasing in your sight. Alone we can do nothing, but through his sacrifice may we receive your love and mercy. Amen. And together let us pray the collect for today. True and humble King, hailed by the crowd as the Messiah, grant us the faith to know you and love you, 
that we may be found beside you on the way of the cross, which is the path of glory. Amen. Amen. We continue with the Lord's Prayer. We invite you to join in with this new setting. May the Father, who so loved the world that he gave his only Son, bring you by faith to his eternal life. Amen. May Christ, who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will, keep you steadfast as you walk with him the way of his cross. Amen. May the Spirit, who strengthens us to suffer with Christ, that we may share his glory, set your minds on life and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our service now concludes with the postlude and the dismissal gospel. <laughs>
Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money. So he watched for an opportunity to hand him over. <laughs> 